How is it going, everybody? It is currently the last day of June, which means that we're going to do our July 2019 MLB tier list and power rankings. On the screen right now, we have what our rankings were at the start of this month, the June 2019 MLB tier list and power rankings. There's been a good amount of shakeups. You know, there's going to be a lot of changes so far. You noticed I have clarified some of the tiers. I've also added a new tier. I didn't like having all these teams in the C tier, so I've added C plus tier, which is basically C tier, but better than like mediocre, slightly better than mediocre, because I think there's a good amount of teams that fall into that. They'll finish with like a round and up above 500 record, but won't make the playoffs. So that, those are the changes that have been made. I'm going to reset this tier list, and we're going to get into it. There we go. Starting with the Phillies. Oh, I reset everything. That's very wonderful. Give me a minute. Alright, sorry about that. We're back. First team, the Phillies. We're going to put the Phillies in B tier. Um, the Phillies have hit this really big, like, awful skid since I said they were in A tier. They're not definitely not A tier anymore. You could probably make the argument that they're not even B tier and more C plus tier. But um, I think the start they had gives them, like, an amount of validation. I can put some amount of trust into the Phillies. I think they're still they're still close to if not in possession of the second wild card spot. Um, they're a pretty good amount behind the Braves, and I I don't think they've completely lost the division yet. But they're probably it'll be very difficult for them to come back because they've lost a lot of ground to the Braves. Um, I still don't really. I the Phillies are still a good team even without Andrew McCutcheon, even with Aaron Nola underperforming a good amount, Bryce Harper not having a great season, still a good season but not great. The Phillies are still a good team. The lineup is solid. The bullpen's pretty bad, but every bullpen in that division is pretty bad. So you gotta take things, you know, everything is relative. Um, the staff with Nola, Arietta, Pivetta, who I believe is back up with the big, team, big league team. Um, Zach Eflin and Vince Velasquez, maybe? Maybe he's... I don't know if he's actually still on the staff, but... The staff is fine. It's really nothing special. They could have picked up an arm at the. De they could have picked up an arm. They could have sent Dallas Keuchel. They could have traded for one. They probably will trade for one at the deadline if they're serious about competing this year. Um, the bullpen kind of a mess right now. Like Robertson is either still injured or just been bad. Who they traded for to be their sort of closer this year. Uh, Nicasio is bad. We'll stay of like. I don't, I'm really not even off the top of my head. Not they have like J D Hammer, who they called up, and he's like fine. Um, they have Pat Neshek, who I don't think is that good anymore. It's just a lot of names that really don't like excite you too much. They don't have that ace reliever right now, who like David Robertson was brought in to be. Um, with that being said, the National League is really wide open, is kind of the theme we're going to see here. There's like 10 teams that are, could compete for the division or the wild card spots in the National League. So, yeah, they've, I'll put the Phillies in B tier for now. I think they're fine. I don't think they should panic or like end the season up or anything. They're not in great shape, but they'll probably, they'll probably be near the bottom of B tier, is my prediction. The Pirates. Put them in C tier, not C plus tier. Um, they're really, they're slightly under 500 right now, but with how tight the NL Central is, they're really not totally out of the mix, so I can't just put them in D tier, but realistically, I, they have a very low chance of making the playoffs. Um, there's just too many good teams in that division, and the Pirates just don't have, I, I don't know, they just don't have the hard-hitting, like, lineup. They don't have, the rotation is solid, but kind of underperforming. Archer has been bad. Musgrove has been bad since, like, the first month of the season. Um, Williams and Tyone. I think I know Tyone is still out. I think Williams is still out, too. Their rotation's kind of in shambles right now, which was, like, that was the big selling point of that team. Like, was there, they have a good rotation. Um, they're probably going to be selling at the deadline. I would not be surprised. I would be kind of surprised to see Felipe Vasquez get traded, but I wouldn't be surprised to see, like, Keone Kella get traded. Maybe they trade off one of their bats. I don't know. Yeah, I don't, they, they, in that division, I, you can't really count them out, they're only like six games back, but it's, just looking at the team on paper, I just don't, I don't have a lot of faith, I have even less faith in them than I do in the Reds, even though I think the Reds are further back. Alright, here we have the Padres, I'm gonna put them in C plus tier, 
Um, the Padres are... They were a team I put at the top of C tier in the last tier list, I believe, and I still hold the belief that on paper the team is pretty pretty much performing exactly how you'd expect them to in a round 500 team with some younger guys having breakout type seasons with like Tatis, Fremo Reyes, Hunter Renfro, um, but also the pitching staff just isn't quite there yet to really compete fully. Um, they could still go on a run, and I think this is a theme with all three teams in the Rockies, the Diamondbacks, and the Padres, every team in the NL West other than the Giants, is that it only really takes one run for them to be like in the thick of things. So you can't definitely can't cut any of them out. But um I still think all three of them are gonna fall into the, I'll just Ah, okay, I won't do it right now, I'll do them in order. I think all three of them are gonna fall so I'll put the Diamondbacks there right now. I think all three of these teams are gonna fall and I think they're perfect candidates for the C plus tier where they're they all have like opportunities. Like it real it's only gonna take one like five, six game winning streak for them to propel themselves above, but they're all jockeying with each other for position, trying to get that wild card spot behind the Dodgers. None of them are winning the division. Um with in the case of the Padres, I still think they're like a good arm away. The bullpen outside of Yates is a little shaky. The rotation, they have Chris Paddock, who's been pretty solid. Joey lacasey has been fine. You have guys like Eric Lauer, um, what's his name, Nick Markavichus, who I'm not really even sure is up with the big league team anymore. And uh, who is the other guy? Uh, well, I think he has long hair. That's all I can say off the top of my head, sorry. Um, the rotation isn't like... They need that one guy that they know can lock down a game. That's like kind of a common theme with a lot of the teams on this list that aren't going to be an S tier. And even some of the ones in S tiers, they don't have that one guy in the rotation they can call upon and just lock down a game, right? You can, you can count on him, you know, week in, week out. He'll give you that one quality start. Gives your team a chance to win every time he goes out there. So I don't think the Pirate Padres really have that guy yet. Paddock is very close to it, but he's just a little young. He lo- lacks the experience. He's not an innings limit this year, so he might not even be available for the playoffs should the Padres make the playoffs, which is kind of a scary thought. Um, I don't think the Padres are, they, again, it only takes one run, but I don't, I don't like the Padres chance to get into the playoffs here. Diamondbacks in a similar vein. Um, the difference between the Diamondbacks and the Padres, I don't know why I'm going to put the Diamondbacks above the Padres, I think, is, I think the Diamondbacks lineup is worse than the Padres. They're playing that stadium that inflates offense a little bit, but I think they have a better lineup overall. Sorry, I think the Padres have a better lineup than the, the Diamondbacks do. With that being said, the Diamondbacks have almost two guys that the Padres really lack in Zach Greinke and Robbie Ray that you can trust to go out there and give you at least, if not a quality start, like about five like decent innings of baseball that won't just like knock your team out of the game and immediately make you lose, which is, you know, that's important, right? Um, Greinke's having a good season. Ray's having a good season. I think he's having a better season than his 2018. Um, and... In the, the lineup with guys like Escobar, David Peralta, Cattell Marte, who's being an all, he's an all-star starter, so good for him. I like him a lot. Um, you have those three, you're like anchoring down the middle of that lineup. And outside of that, the line is pretty bad, but it's not like... You have like role players like Nick Ahmed, who's great on defense. You have guys like Christian Walker, who's having a pretty solid... I'm not sure if it still qualifies as rookie season, but he's having a solid, you know, youngest season. Um... I think the Diamondback and yet the, the lineup is definitely worse than the Padres on paper, but I like that their rotation is a little bit better overall. They have like John Duplantier who's injured right now, but he showed a flashes of like being a really, if not top of the line, really solid starter. I like their rotation. Um, the bullpen is also not great, but really, like when you look at all the teams in baseball, what team does have a great bullpen? You have like the Yankees. And maybe the Astros. And other than that, like, there's a lot of pretty bad bullpens. Um, yeah. Uh, I like the Diamondbacks. I don't think they qualify for B tier at all, but I like them. The Mariners. I'm really honest. You could make the argument that the Mariners are an F tier team. I'm going to put them in D tier for now. I think that start just, like, kind of afforded them. They would have to be really really bad for the season after that 12-3 start to lose 100 games. 
You know, people talk about how difficult it is to win 100 games. You have to think about it. It's also that difficult to lose 100 games. You have to be as good as a team has to be to win 100 games. A team has to be that bad to lose 100 games. And we have a few of them this year that probably will lose 100 games. I don't think the Mariners are one of those teams because their start was good. Um, with that being said, the Mariners are not a good baseball team. They, Their pitching staff is bad. Their starting rotation is bad. You have guys that are supposed to be pretty solid. Guys like Marco Gonzalez, Yusei Kikuchi, um, Wade My, uh, not Wade My, Wade LeBlanc, who like, you know, they were never going to headline a staff, but they were expected to like at least hold down a rotation spot and like be decent starters, and kind of none of them have been. Their bullpen's kind of awful. They're trading away every. They trade away Jay Bruce. They trade away Edwin Encarnacion, and the offense is not bad. Like I, they were leading the league in homers at one point. It might still be, but. Um, the off the offense being able to hit well does not offset the fact that they are like by far the worst fielding team in baseball. Like they cannot field. They all of their players lose a ton of value by their inability to field. So yeah, the Mariners are bad. Um, I don't have to say too much more than that. They're not a good team. The Chicago White Sox. I'm actually gonna put the Chicago White Sox in C tier behind the Pirates. Um, they've been a pretty big surprise this season, and I don't think they're going to be, you know, in the mix of a playoff spot or anything. I mean, they're definitely below five. They're definitely a team that's going to finish below five hundred, but they're at least a team that's shown flashes of like a young, exciting team going forward. That you're like, you you know, you can see them competing in the future, which is you know a big step, like forward for them and above teams like the Mariners, but it's still probably a couple of years away. You know, and, you know, fully tanking teams like the Royals, you know, the Royals or the freaking, you know, the Royals and the Orioles who, like, they're definitely a couple years away from competing. The Sox, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if the Sox were, like, a wild card type team next year. Uh, with that being said, they have almost no chance this year with the Twins and Indians in that division. But, you know, you, you have pieces. You have Lucas Giolito having that breakout type season. He's... I wouldn't say a Cy Young candidate just because he isn't really with the name recognition, but he's, like, at least deserving of, like, you know, recognition for... He's at least deserving of consideration for the Cy Young Award. He's been that good. And, um, you have in the lineup, you have Yoel Moncada, Jose Abreu. Guys that, like, you know, they're not, like, household names, but, like, Moncada's on the come-up. Aloy Jimenez started the season off pretty badly, but he's he's sort of starting to figure it out. He'll be good next season. I certainly don't think he's already, like, dead in the water as a pro. He's definitely not a bust yet. Um, you have guys, you still have, like, Reynaldo Lopez, Carlos Rodon in the rotation, who they have under team control for the next few years. Um, that will probably be, you know, pieces in that rotation for the next few years, because they're, they have that potential. They've shown it in the past. They've shown that they can be, like, at least, like, above average pitchers. And, you know, you, the potential is still there for them to get better than that. So, I think the White Sox certainly not going to compete for a playoff spot this year, but they, they're showing flashes. Uh, I'm excited for the future of the White Sox. I don't definitely don't think they're a bad team. All right. The Reds, I'm also going to put in C tier. Put them in C tier right above the Pirates. Uh, Cincinnati has surprised, to everybody's surprise, been the complete opposite of what they expected. They expected them to be a slightly below 500 team with a bad rotation and a lineup that mashes. They are actually a slightly below 500 team with a bad lineup and a very good rotation, which is not what people were expecting. Um, you have pieces in that rotation. You have Tanner Roark, uh, Tanner Roark, Anthony Desclafani, um, Alex Wood, who's injured. He hasn't played a single game yet, actually. Um, but guys that, like, aren't suit again, not household names, but they get the job done. And then at the top of the rotation, you have Luis Castillo, who he cooled off from his, like, really great start where there was, like, Scion talks around him, but he's still been a very good, a good anchor for that rotation. Um, it's It's been a very above average rotation, I think. I think I've saw, I've seen some numbers where they've been, like, the second best rotation in the National League behind the Dodgers, which really is not what anybody would have expected from a rotation kind of cobbled together, like journeymen, you know, trade acquisitions, like, cheap free agents. Oh, and Sonny Gray, they also in that rotation, has been fine. I don't think he's been that good, but he's been mediocre. Um, with the Reds, like, you have to think their rotation is over for overperforming, but you also have to think their lineup is underperforming. 
you know, with Joey Votto having a, a career worst season, Yasiel Puig having a career worst season. Um, and you, you do have guys like Winker, who I think is, like, not hitting very well right now, but he has always projected to be an above-average hitter, and he's been an above-average hitter in the past. Suarez, who I think is good, but not having a good season, not a great season. Guys that are sort of underperforming, but, you know, they shouldn't be. So, but in the same vein, the rotation is guys who are probably overperforming who shouldn't be. So I think this is about, like, their true talent level in terms of wins just reversed a bit in terms of hitting and pitching. Um, I think the Reds on paper are better than the Pirates. They just have more exciting pieces, more chances for breakout. I think if I had to pick one between the Reds and the Pirates to go on a win streak and, you know, put themselves in the mix for that division, it'd probably be the Reds. But uh, I don't think it's going to happen necessarily, at least over the Cubs, Cardinals, and Brewers. So uh, the Reds find themselves in C tier. All right. You Chicago Cubs. I'm actually kind of conflicted. I think I think they're going to go in A tier. They're winning that. Now, with the NL Central, very strange case where the Cubs and Brewers have both been like pretty bad in the last month but like almost equally pretty bad to the point where they're like still neck and neck for that division despite only being like five games over 500 so the Cubs winning the central right now I think they're gonna barely find themselves in A tier just out of B tier um and they're the Cubs like again on paper the Cubs are a good team they have a good lineup they have a rotation of five potential aces who aren't really pitching like they have, the, okay, outside of the first month of the season, the Cubs rotation has been very good, I, I'm pretty sure, but they haven't, like, been good enough to, like, offset the fact that their bullpen is not great. A lot of their lineup pieces are underperforming. And not all of their lineup pieces. You guys like Wilson Contreras having career at the play. Chris Bryant has been a lot better than he was last year. Rizzo, who's being, like, consistently Anthony Rizzo. Javier Baez, who, you know... I expected to regress a lot from last season, but, you know, he just continues to swing at everything and still be a very good hitter despite that. Um, but a lot of the role players, guys like Kyle Schwarber, Albert Amora, are just not having good seasons, and that really kind of drags down, like, it drags down the potential of that team because, you know, it, those guys that, like, Schwarber and Almora, or Schwarber had a very good season last season, but Schwarber and Almora that, and guys like Addison Russell in that same vein, guys that... You know, you don't have to have them be stars, but if they can elevate themselves to do, like, above-average players, it just makes that lineup overall so much deeper and better. Um, just not really being able to get it done this year. So, um, I mean, by no means are the Cubs a bad team. If I had to pick one team right now, gun to my head, who's going to win the NL Central? Probably the Cubs. But um, with the skid that the Brewers have been on, and it has been a bad skid, you would have really liked for the Cubs to win a lot more games in that stretch and, you know, actually have a significant lead in that division, which they do not have. Um, it, it, they've, it's, I wouldn't say it's been a disappointing season. It can't really be too disappointing when you're winning the division, but, you know, there's something missing for the Cubs. And uh, I think I think if any team in the Central is going to figure it out and, you know, distance themselves from the pack, it'll probably be the Cubs at some point. But you really can't count out the Brewers. You can't count out the Cardinals just because the Cubs have not been, like, as good as they should be. So, you know, the Cubs, A tier, but kind of a reluctant A tier. Um, I still think they're going to win that division. I still think if they don't win the division, they'll probably make the wild card game. But it's just not – something is missing with the Cubs. You, it almost feels similar to the Cubs from last season where something is just, like, not there, right? Um, Yeah. Right, down to the Kansas City Royals. The Royals are bad. They they fail in nearly all facets of the game. They their rotation it has Danny Duffy. It has um, Ian Kennedy, I think, who might be in the bullpen now. Um, you're just not excited about anybody in that rotation. You're not excited about any of the bullpen for sure. Like you had some guys like Brad Boxberger, who they were hoping to like flip at the deadline for pieces, but I'm pretty sure everybody in that bullpen is just not good. Um, and the lineup, a lot of guys have started out the season pretty well, like Alex Gordon, who like thought maybe you could flip the deadline, just have cooled off. They've kind of regressed back to what they probably should be. The Royals are bad. They're going to lose 100 games. 
Um, surprisingly, not as bad as the Tigers. They're probably not going to get last place in that division. But yeah, they're they're not good. There's not a really a whole lot to talk about with them. The Minnesota Twins will stay in S tier. Um, you know they have a very significant lead in the Central AL Central. They have a lineup that continues to mash from top to bottom, one through eight. Actually, one through nine because it's the AL they hit. Um, even their nine hitter Byron Buxton is very good. Their eight type hitters like, I think they have like Jonathan Scope in the eight hole. He hits. Everybody just hits. And that's the MO with Minnesota. Their rotation. Still overperforming. I think they're starting to regress a little bit. Guys like Martin Perez, Jake Odorizzi, that you wouldn't really expect to be having all star type seasons are kind of cooling off, but they're still a good rotation, and they could probably use one more like top of the line starter at the deadline, a guy like Madison Bumgarner. And they've been in talks to acquire Madison Bumgarner specifically, but they're pretty clearly going to win that division, I think. It's just a matter of. When they get to the playoffs, can they get it done? And I'm not sure if they can, but they're pretty much a lock to win that division. Just with the lead they have right now, how good they've been in the regular season, how much offense they have. I would be very surprised if the Twins did not win that division. The Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. C plus C. I'm going to go with C. Um, the Angels do not have a chance in that division against the Astros. I, you could definitely make the argument that the fourth best team in that division behind the A's and the, and the Rangers. Um, the Angel, the thing with the Angels, is they just don't have no pitching staff. Like, they just haven't. Trevor Cahill's bad. Matt Harvey is bad. And so they were, they were like the acquisitions that everybody was like, yeah, they're pretty low risk, just because they're one year deals. But <laughs> they're not good. <laughs> like, they are not. They're almost not major league caliber pitchers, and like. With Haney and Skaggs and Griffin Cannon, you have, like, a pretty okay top three of the rotation. Nothing, like, jumps out at you. Like, Canning is, like, a going forward, a potential ace-type pitcher. And he's showing that he's having a good season. But Haney's back from injury. He's in. Eh. Skaggs has been in eh all season. I mean, at least they've been not garbage. But they're not going to, like, inspire any confidence in, like, being, you know, ace-type starters in the future. Um... The rotation just holds the team back a lot, I think. I mean, they have a pretty solid bullpen, guys like Hansel Robles, Ty Buttry. Um, but the rotation just holds the team back. The lineup is pretty solid. You have Tommy Lestella still having a good season. Not, not like, God-tier all-star season like he was earlier, but still a good season. Um, you have Justin Upton back from injury, Shohei Otani back from injury, um, and obviously Mike Trout. It's a pretty oh, it's a pretty solid lineup actually. Dave Fletcher having a pretty good season too. Um, it's actually a pretty solid lineup, better than they were at least at this time at this time of making last month. For I think to get into C plus tier, a team has to have at least a and I can't say that they're out of it, right? Like they're a runaway. Like win five games in a row, they probably have Maybe, maybe not possession of a wild card spot, but they're a game or two out of possession of a wild card spot. They're not, like, out of it by any means, but it's got to be a good run, and also other teams have to lose a bunch of games. It's not likely at all. It's, it's I I would be very surprised if it happened. Um, For the Angels, it's just, they just don't, don't have the pitching. Like, you can't really, going on a win streak in Major League Baseball is pretty difficult, and in order to do so, you need to have guys top to bottom of your rotation that can give your team a chance to win every night that you're during that win streak, and the Angels don't have that. Um, excuse me. Uh, yeah, I do not think the Angels are going to make the playoffs this year, and it's partially due to the start they've had. I think if they were like even just a few games above five hundred, they'd be in C plus, maybe even B tier. Just they're just they're just not getting it done right now. Uh, yeah, Angels are going in C tier. I don't that all the teams in C tier by no means are they just totally out of the playoffs, but it's just going to be very hard for them. A lot of things have to go right. A lot of things have to go wrong for other teams. And with the Angels, you know, a lot of players back from injury, and the injury bug is kind of, you know, taking his foot off the gas. But it's uh, it, it'll be it'll be a long road. All right, on to the Boston Red Sox. Red Sox A tier last tier list. Um, now that we've added another tier, and put them in B tier, a little bit at the Phillies. Um, with the Red Sox, you're just waiting, right? Like every time it looks like they figured something out, they figured it out. They just like lose a series to a bad team. It's just like, okay, what what's happening here? There's something off, right? 
in the first couple, in the first two months, you can kind of say it's just luck variance that a lot of your players are underperforming. That you know your your team overall, the, your record is just not as good as it should be for the players you have on that team. After three months, where really nothing has changed, they played another month of about five hundred baseball. They're like ten games back in the division. You have to wonder if something is up. Um, I mean, obviously. You have a pretty good rotation. You have Sale and Price at the top. Sale and Price both having good seasons. And Sale was bad for the first month or so, but since then he's been Chris Sale. You really shouldn't be any worried about Chris Sale. Price, kind of a similar deal. He hasn't been, like, great, but he's, like, a round three ERA. He's, he's having a good season. Uh, Porcello, who was having a fine season until he gave up, like, ten runs in one inning, like, last night. Now his ERA is, like, five, but I wouldn't be too worried about it. Uh... Eduardo Rodriguez, another piece that's like, yeah, he'll probably break out eventually. It's not going to be this season. He had another, like, 3-5 to 4 ERA season, which is fine. You don't need a whole lot more than that, but you would like him to have broken out. Uh, it is a good rotation, and that was, the tr- that was like, one of the strong spots. That- the strong spot of the team last season was the rotation and the lineup, though. It- this-, this year, the lineup doesn't seem to be, like, as deadly. Betts at the top is not... He's, he's definitely not having a bad season. But it's not like anywhere close to the MVP season he had last year, and you couldn't really expect him to do two seasons, have two seasons that in a row. But you were hoping for it if you're a Red Sox fan. Um, it's still a good season. He's still like nearly an All Star level player with his like great defense and right field. But he's like an eight, like eight twenty, eight to eight fifty OPS somewhere in that range, which is good but not great. Uh, ben Intendi, similar. Um, you're really hoping you're really hoping for him to break out if you're a Red Sox fan and just turn into the superstar that big people know he can be with that like really great bat to ball contact skill. But uh he's just not doing it. He's having like I think slightly worse than last season season. So you know, the Red Sox, the lineup is just it's underperforming a good amount. A lot of the players you're hoping would break out aren't breaking out, or all the older pieces are, you know, aging and declining. They're def again, by no means are they added. I would say they have about a 50-50 chance to make the playoffs. It's going to be in a wild card, though, is the thing, because, like, the Yankees had that issue. Not necessarily sewn up, but, you know, the Sox were, like, 10 games back of the Yankees and, like, 4 or 5, I think, games back out of the Rays, the back of the Rays. So, yeah, it'll be it's, it'll be a long road, and it's very unlikely for them to win that division, but I think they'll make the play. They're a good enough team where, it, again... The better a team is on paper, the more likely they are to make just a run where they string a bunch of wins together and then jump in front of a bunch of other teams in the standings. Uh, I think the Red Sox are a team that are have a pretty solid chance of making that second wild card spot. I would say the Rays are all, not definitely not a lock, but very likely to win that first wild card spot. So you have an interesting dynamic where you have, you know, two really good teams that people expected to, if not win, at least be very likely to compete for their divisions in the Indians of the Red Sox, probably competing for that second wild card spot, which will be interesting to see. I'll talk more about the Indians later. The Toronto Blue Jays are nearly tanking. They are they are not good. They are tanking. They're bad. <laughs> um, yeah, they're not good. Uh, they don't hit. They don't pitch. They don't. They don't do anything. The Blue Jays are not good. They're kind of rolling over and dying. And it's a product of that division, too, where you're three playoff contenders in the division. But they're a te- They're the kind of team where if you're the Yankees, Rays, or Red Sox, and you're competing for you know the, the top of that division, you are disappointed if you don't sweep the Blue Jays. And losing a series of the Blue Jays is potentially backbreaking, which the Red Sox did kind of reasonably. They're that kind of team, right? Like, one that is not going to make any noise. They're... Uh, by my own definition, they're not going to lose 100 games, I don't think. By their current record, they're not really on pace, too. And they're probably underperforming their, you know, on-paper record a little bit. So I guess they're D-tier. They're probably not F-tier all the way. But, uh, yeah, they're, they're definitely not a good team. They don't... They're just... Their lineup is anemic. They don't do anything on offense, even with Vlad Jr., who's picking it up. They have Kevin Biggio, who's pretty solid. But, like, Vlad Jr. and Biggio are, like, their two and three hitters already, which is kind of nuts considering that was a lineup of, like, established major leaguers. They traded away Kevin Pilar early in the season. They're going to trade Marcus Stroman at the deadline. There's definitely sellers. Definitely not competing. The Blue Jays are not good. All right. Washington Nationals. They're going in B tier. And, uh, the Nationals have been good this this month. Like, they were, I want to say, like, 
more than 10 games under 500 at the start of this month, and I put them in C tier last month because I thought they would go on a run like this at some point. They're good enough on paper to do so, and you know they have. I think they've catapulted themselves into a similar level to the Phillies. They're like a game or two back of the Phillies and like seven or eight back of the division, I think. I mean, probably not even that much, probably like four or five back of the division. I don't have the standings memorized offhand, but yeah, they're in a similar spot to the Phillies record-wise, but you know, they're hot and the Phillies are very cold. And uh, I would not be surprised if the Nationals, you know, jumped over the Phillies in the standings pretty soon. Um, and it's just, it all stems from their rotation. Strasburg, Corbin, Scherzer is the best top three in a rotation in baseball. They're all three of them are aces. Um, and when you have that good of a rotation, you really can never be counted out. Like, it's so easy to go on a run. And so much of going on a run is having those consistent starters in rotation. It's so easy to go on a run when all three of the guys can give you ace-like starts. And they can string them together. They can do it consistently. And there's a skid where Corbin was pretty bad, but I think he's kind of bounced back from it. Um, you have three guys like that top the rotation. A lineup where you had guys that were underperforming. Guys like Brian Dozier. Um, you know, Brian Dozier, Trey Turner. Guys that were underperforming, but you knew they would pick it back up at, at some point. Adam Eaton, and they have been picking it up. It's a good lineup. It's a good rotation. It's a bad bullpen, but the bullpen and the ERA is bad, you know. But, you know, by... They haven't, like... When you take things in the context of the NL East where every bullpen is bad, they haven't been, like, blowing leads at, like, an alarming pace compared to, like, the Phillies or the Mets. So it's a bad bullpen for sure, but not one that can't be fixed with a couple arms at the deadline. Like, the Nats should be in buy mode with Rendon's contract expiring, who should be an all-star, by the way. Um, He definitely, the Nats definitely should be in the mix for, you know, additions at the deadline. They should be in the mix for a playoff spot. Um, At this point, you could probably make the argument they're, like, above the Phillies, actually. Uh, But they're definitely a B-tier type team. I would be extremely unsurprised to see them in a wild card mix or maybe even winning that division if the Braves slip up. We have the Oakland Athletics. I want the Athletics in C-plus tier. Uh, I like the A's. I think the Montas suspension very much hurts any chance. They would be, like, borderline B-tier if Montas didn't get suspended because he was, like, their top of the rotation arm type guy. But the A's have a pretty... They, they don't. It's not a great bullpen, but it's a functioning bullpen, which is more than you can say about a lot of teams. They have a good lineup that hits, if not top to bottom, they... They have, like, major league caliber players top to bottom that, you know, have the potential to go up there and get a hit whenever whenever they can. Um, Matt Chapman, Matt Olson, Chris Davis, very solid middle of the order. Uh, guys like Ramon Laureano, uh, Ramon Laureano, Jerickson Profar, not, like, great players, not star caliber, but they'll get the job done. Uh, it's just, it's a pretty solid team, you know. The A's last season... It's very, actually pretty similar team to the A's team that won all... Did they win 100 games last season? They either won 100 or were very close to winning 100 games last season. Uh, it's a pretty similar team to that one where they could go on a run at some point, which is what happened. They were like hovering around a 500, and they just rattled off like 30 out of 40 or something nuts. Um, and, you know, basically stole the second wild card from the Mariners. But it's just... On paper, it, you just have a hard time believing that the A's can get it done in that division against the Astros. And when you look at their competition for that log card spot, it's the Indians, it's the Red Sox, it's the Rays, teams that are just, on paper, so much better than them. And it, it's, it's an uphill battle for the A's. I think they're a good team. I think they're slightly above average, which, you know, is, you know, the merits for C-plus tier. But uh, I don't think they're going to be... I don't... Eh. The way I'm describing it almost sounds like they're a C-tier team, but I think they're pretty solidly a tier above like the angels and the pirates and the white Sox. um yeah i'll I'll put them in c plus tier i would be very surprised if they wanted to run but they're not a bad team by any means the atlanta Braves. i'm putting them in a tier ahead of the cubs i think they're actually borderline s tier in the sense that they look like the best team in that division by a lot right now that rotation has been functioning much better than a lot of people thought it would especially if you told me that mike fultonevich would be garbage with like a 70 ERA, but they would be the best team in the division and have a good rotation, I would not have believed you at the start of the season. But that's basically what's happening right now. Um, yeah, the Dallas Cycle signing, which is a great pickup. Any team that picked up Dallas Cycle would, would have been a great pickup because it would have been cheap. It would have been a one-year deal. Basically, no risk involved, and you get, you know, potential ace-type upside for a no-risk contract. 
and the Braves got him. I don't think he's really performing super great yet, but he will at some point. If not super great, at least solid. Um, you have Mike Soroka having a great season. You know, in the mix for Cy Young talk. If, if he's not, he should be. And in the mix for Rookie of the Year talks. And you have, like, Max Fried and other young arms coming up. They're all... They just have so many guys that potentially could pitch in the majors. That if they're not pitching right now, they'll just jump up next man up and just take that rotation spot. And they're all good. Like... Kyle Wright, Tuki Toussaint, guys that if they're not at the rotation right now, they definitely could be, and they're just kind of being like stashed in the minors, just waiting for their chance to get, just waiting for their chance. And you know the Braves have super deep rotation, the bullpen again pretty bad, not bad where a couple arms of the deadline couldn't fix it. Uh, and the lineup, the lineup is great: Acuna, Donaldson, Freeman. Dansby Swanson having a breakout season. Albies not really having a breakout season, but having a very good season, better than last season. You know, just a bunch of really solid hitters, and, you know, they hit top to bottom, right? Nick Markakis quietly gets it done. Johan Camargo, a super utility guy, he gets it done. They just they just all get it done. I like the Braves a lot. They have that division not quite sewn up, but I would be surprised if any team came back to beat them. Um, the Braves look very good. They're going to make the playoffs for sure. The Colorado Rockies. I'm going to put them in C-plus tier. I'm putting them above the Diamondbacks and Padres in C-plus tier. Uh, if any team out of these three is going to challenge, they're not going to challenge the Dodgers. If they're going to challenge for a wild card spot, it'll be the Rockies. Um, they have the best rotation. Then eh, they maybe don't have the best rotation. They have Herman Marquez, who's very good. And outside of that, it's actually not a great rotation. John Gray, who's pretty solid, having a much better season than the last season, and Kyle Freeland, who is not even up with the big league team right now because he's been so bad, which is unfortunate. Um. He was their ace type guy last season. Uh, you were hoping he'd be tandem aces with Herman Marquez this season. It just hasn't worked out. But you know the rotation is eh, if Kyle Freeland isn't in it, and pretty good if Kyle Freeland is. The lineup is pretty good. Charlie Blackman, absolutely having a great season. Even if you factor in the fact that he can't play defense for shit and he plays in Coors, still a very good player. He's probably the best hitter on the team right now. Nolan Arenado, he's Nolan Arenado. Deserves to be an All Star starter. Uh, Trevor Story, injured right now, but he's been having a good season. He hits for power. He, he plays good defense short. He takes bases. Um, Ian Desmond, surprisingly not having a terrible season. You know, he plays a surprisingly competent center field. He is not, like, anemic at the plate like he was last season. Uh, you have David Dahl having a great season. Kind of quietly, but he's, like, been actually one of the best outfielders in baseball. And you, you factor in course, he probably hasn't been, but numbers-wise he has been. Um, yeah, I like the Rockies a lot. It's just, without Kyle Freeland, they just lack, like, the solid top of the rotation. They would probably need to, like, super challenge for a wild card spot. But if any team is going to do it, it's going to be the Rockies. And you saw last season where, like, the Rockies were really jockeying around for a lot of the first half of the season. And after the All-Star break, they really just, like, jumped ahead at, like, the Diamondbacks. I guess it was only the Diamondbacks that really compete. It was the Diamondbacks, the Dodgers, and the and the Rockies competing on top of that division, and they really kind of just left the Diamondbacks in the dust after the All Star break. Um, wouldn't be surprised if a similar thing happened this season with the Diamondbacks and the Padres. Uh, I think the Rockies are a little bit better than either of them, but uh, it'll be hard for them to get it done just because the the NL West a lot of good teams in it. There's a lot of teams in the Central that are competing for wild card spots. It's uh, it's gonna be difficult for the Rockies. They could do it for sure. They're like definitely borderline B tier. I could see them at the bottom of B tier. I'm with them C plus for now, but um, actually, you know what? I'm gonna put the Rockies in B tier. You know, the more I think about it, the more I think like they're. De- I think they're definitely a tier above the Diamondbacks and the Padres. Like the more I'm thinking about it, if you factor out the fact they started like three and twelve or something, they're actually been like not one of the best, but one of the better teams in baseball. I think they're. I think they definitely could compete for that. And a log card spot. I need to make sure I don't like. I need to keep track of it in my head. Like logically, there shouldn't be more than three teams from each division, high in like B tier, like competing for a log card spot because only two of them can win and one of them is like a 50-50 odds. So you know there should really only be twelve teams in this S A B section of the tier list. I should make sure that, um, just because you have the three division winners and three teams that are like really in the mix for a wild card. Is kind of the stratification we're going for here, and team slightly below that'll go in C plus, and below that'll go in this section of tiers. Okay, the New York Yankees. 
They were an A tier last last month. They're an S tier this month. I'm actually gonna put them above the twins. They're really good. They are so good. <laughs> like their lineup is absolutely off the charts. I think they're probably not performing quite the level that Minnesota's lineup is, but on paper that lineup is absolutely absurd. You have LeMahieu at the top who's having like a resurgent season. What a great pickup he's been. Like one of the best hitters in the American League by average. He doesn't really have he still doesn't really have her power, but he just is, is so good. Like, I don't know how he's a god. He's a god with runners in scoring position. Like, he just... He is, he's hitting, like, 500 runners in scoring position. It was totally unsustainable. Totally unexpected. And he's not going to keep doing that. It's just not possible. But it's, like, it's pretty remarkable how well he hits with runners in scoring position. He's, like, a 340 average. And average is stupid, I know. But, like, he's just... He's been way better than anybody expected him to be. Especially leaving Coors Field. Like... He's been really freaking good um, and great at the top of that order. You have Judge back. You have Stanton. Not back, but uh, he'll, he'll get back soon, presumably. He's played like 10 games this season between like three DL stints, so you have to presume he'll be back at some point. Um, once he comes back, that lineup is absolutely insane. They traded for Edwin Encarnacion, got him for basically nothing, which is kind of insane. Uh, He's another just huge bat in that order that you have to pitch around. The order is so, like, long, like, is what I'm getting at. When you have guys at the bottom of your order, like Aaron Hicks and Glaber Torres, you, your, your order, all who are, like, all-star caliber hitters, like, you just, it just means your order is so deep. There's You can't pitch around guys because there's a guy behind them that will come up and hit a home run. Like, people are saying that even with all the injuries they've had to judge and stand, they still have, like, a pretty good chance of breaking the home run record that they themselves set last season. The, you know, the Yankees lineup is just crazy. And the rotation is kind of a question mark. We'll get to that in a sec, because they have the best bullpen in baseball. And they haven't exactly been pitching like it recently, but Britton, Ottavino, Chad Green, uh, Tommy Conley... And Aroldis Chapman closing is probably the best bullpen in baseball. Those five, like, compose the best bullpen in baseball. They're all, like, maybe not ace aces anymore, but were ace bullpen pieces at some point that you could really just count on a coven and pitch a squirrel saying and get out of a jam, or get out of jam. Um, I would say the Yankees are probably the second best team in baseball right now. Uh, just, even with the rotation, that's still kind of a question mark. You know, you have Tanaka, you have Jay Happ, who's been pretty bad, actually. So you have Tanaka and Paxton, who are both pretty solid pieces going forward. It'll probably be in the playoff rotation. And a few question marks, but Tanaka, Paxton, Severino, who just had another injury setback, but will probably be back, maybe not after the All-Star, right after the All-Star, probably by August. He'll have a couple months try to like, get himself reaccustomed, ready for the playoffs. And if you get, like... Early 2018 slash 2017, Luis Severino and add them to this rotation. They're pretty easily the best team in the American League, I would say. They're potentially the best team in the American League even without them. But when you add another ace ace pitcher, and I factor in the fact they're probably gonna trade for another pitcher like Marcus Stroman or Madison Bumgarner, you have to imagine they're like the favorites in the AL, especially with the skid that the Astros have kind of been on recently. The Yankees are very good. Okay, St. Louis. Similarly, the Rockies and the Nationals kind of, they're like hovering between C plus and B. I'm going to put them in C plus for right now. They had that great start, but they've played like below 500 baseball for the last two months, like other than in April. And it raises question marks, right? Like the rotation is worse than the Cubs rotation, probably worse than the Brewers rotation. The lineup is great on paper, but they're just not performing. Like, a Paul Goldschmidt has just not lived up the expectations. Um, you've got Matt, Matt Carpenter, who's been bad. Like, not even just, like, the, the lowest position. He's been not good. Um, you know, it's just pieces like that that you're really hoping would anchor down a lineup. They're just not doing it. And their rotation, guys like Miles Michaelis, who they signed to an extension. They had a lot of faith in him after a great 2018, but he just hasn't been that good. And Jack Flaherty's been fine. You have... Factor in the fact that their bullpen ace, kind of like the only guy holding down that bullpen, Jordan Hicks, is getting Tommy John surgery about for a year. Um, it's a question mark in the bullpen. It's a question mark in the rotation. And a lineup that shouldn't be a question mark just is because Matt Carpenter, Paul Goldschmidt, is not performing like they should be. Um, 
But yeah, I'm dropping them out of B tier. I think they're going to be in C tier. C plus tier, rather. Again, I'd only take, in that division, they're still only like two or three games back. This is kind of all relative, but like the way that division is playing, only one team's going to make the playoffs. So we're not going to see a wildcard representative. And for the Cardinals to be the winner of that division, I would say, because oh, here's the thing. Like, it's going to be very hard rating the Cardinals and the Brewers. I think the Brewers are a little bit better right now, but the Cardinals have potentially the best lineup in that division. And if Goldschmidt and Carpenter can turn it on, I think it is the best lineup in that division. So I can't really justify putting them in C-ball. I'm going to put them in B-tier, actually. Uh, it's hard, because it only takes, like, a five-game win streak, and they're winning the division, right? Like... With a lot of these teams, the Rockies, the Nationals, the Cardinals... See, the, the thing with the Cardinals is it takes a five-game win streak for them to start winning their division. With the Rockies and Nationals, it takes a five-game win streak for them to take a wild-card spot. So I really actually don't think you can justify not putting the Cardinals in B tier in you know, teams that have about 50-50 playoff odds. But, yeah, uh, the Cardinals really underperforming right now. You would be hoping they were doing a lot better than they are currently. Um, they're kind of just not. And they'll, will they pick it eventually? Carpenter and Goldschmidt are veterans. I have faith they'll figure it out eventually. And Carpenter even actually wasn't that great until the All-Star break last year when he really turned it on. He was like the best hitter in baseball for a month. He's always been a streaky hitter, so you know he'll probably figure it out at some point. But the Cardinals underperforming, but still by no means out of it at all. Uh, we move on to the Miami Marlins. Hi, this is me from the future. Uh, I'm editing the video right now, and I realize I'm stupid. The Cardinals are actually like way further back than I thought they were, and actually below 500. So just like imagine I put the Cardinals in C plus tier. Thanks. Back to the video. Here's a big surprise. Kind of a hot take actually. I'm putting the Marlins in D tier. I don't think they're an F tier team. Um that rotation is actually super it's if not exciting. It's they have arms that you are hopeful about going forward into the future. You have Caleb Smith, you have Sandy Alcantara, you have Pablo Lopez. Guys that like you, like I don't think like Lopez and Alcantara. I don't think any of them were like super heralded prospects, but they've been st they've stepped into that rotation for a rebuilding team and just gotten it done. Like they've been good. Or Smith has been good. I should clarify. Caleb Smith has been very good. Lopez and Alcantara have just shown flashes of being very good. I don't think their numbers overall are that good, but like every once in a while they'll go out there and just pitch a great game. And you're like this guy could definitely be like a starter for the future Marlins, right? Um, it's an exciting rotation. You take that. Add Jordan Yamamoto, who has been excellent so far and he's only had like five or six starts i'm pretty sure he's been excellent in those starts and you're actually you're for once actually excited about the future of miami they like swept the phillies i don't they're, they're they swept the phillies and they're like on their way to sleeping them again this week like i don't know for the first time since like the end of 2017 i'm actually like i would be pretty excited to be a marlins fan going into the future and they're absolutely not competing this year but like you have pieces if their lineup wasn't probably, like, bottom three worst lineups in baseball, you actually could make the argument that they, like, would maybe even be competing for a wild card spot just because that rotation is, like, good. It is good, it might be stretching it. They're slightly above average. Um, but, uh, yeah, the Marlins are pretty solid. I, okay, I'm talking about the Marlins like they're good. They're not a good team, but they're definitely not F tier, I don't think, just be by, by virtue of that rotation. They're not an F tier team. All right, Cleveland. Cleveland... What a surprise. Also going in B tier. Uh, I think we're just going to do the movement within the tiers at the very end. I don't think the Cleveland is actually the worst team in B tier, but I can't like, do it right now. With Cleveland, they've actually been playing solid baseball recently. Um, they're still like 10 games back of the Central. It, you have to imagine they're going for the wild card spot right now. But they're in a spot where they definitely can't sell at the deadline. Just because so much of the rotation has been injured. And the, you know the key part of that team, what, what was projected to you know, shoot them into the playoffs basically for free was that rotation. Kluber has been injured basically all season. Clevenger just came back from an injury. Carrasco has been out for a while. Um, and the Indians have had, like, rookies step into their spot. They've been, like, pretty surprisingly good, but you can't really expect them to be that good going forward. Uh, with Cleveland, it's just, again, like, everybody projecting them to win the division. On paper, they should be winning the division. They are not winning the division, but... Teams that should win the division on paper are much more likely to be underperforming what they should be doing and likely to go on a run. With the 2017 Indians, who won like 26 in a row, they were like neck and neck in that division. 
maybe even behind actually when they started going on that run and just won 26 in a row. And obviously I'm not saying these Indians are going to win 26 games in a row, but like this is the kind of team with a great rotation top to bottom, one through five, that has the potential to rattle off a crazy win streak and, you know, catapult them. I think they're actually in possession of the second wild card right now. Um, but, like, you're in a spot right now where the A's, or sorry, the Rays, the Red Sox, and the Indians are three very good teams competing for two wild card spots. And, you know, one of them is going to get left out, unfortunately, for them. So, I can't really put the Indians any higher than B tier, but. Um, I think they probably are going to make the playoffs, though. Uh, with that being said, their lineup is underperforming. And the big piece of that is Jose Ramirez, right? Like, if Jose, if you get, like, MVP caliber 2017-2018 Jose Ramirez in that lineup, it's a good lineup again. But it just isn't. You know, it, he's not, he's not, something is wrong with Jose Ramirez. And it has been for, like, an entire calendar, like, an entire fiscal year now. Since, like, the All-Star break last year, where he just has not been a good hitter at all. So, I don't know. Um... Something is wrong with him. If you can figure it out, then the Indians are very good again. Even if he doesn't, they're still a pretty solid team. And I think you can trace it all back. Why didn't they just re-sign Michael Brantley? Like, it seems like... I think I said on my last video, but it seems like such a, like, a no-brainer decision. Like, just... He's a Cleveland guy his whole career. He took a super team-friendly deal with the Astros. Like, the Indians needed outfield bats. It's just... I don't, I don't know. They, they've missed something there. Like, Michael Brantley did that lineup, and it's a good lineup. Um, but B tier right now for the Indians. Milwaukee. The Milwaukee Brewers are also going in B tier. B tier is looking pretty loaded. And this is kind of just what happens when you have a bunch of teams competing for wild cards both the National League. But uh Yeah, the Brewers pretty similar position to the Cardinals actually. Um I would say overall they've been a little better than the Cardinals, but again, this is all three of the teams at the top of the NL Central are kind of underperforming right now, the Cubs, Cardinals, and Brewers. They should really have distanced themselves from the Pirates and Reds because they are, I think, significantly better than both of those teams, but they kind of haven't. The Brewers, you know, hovering a few games above 500 within a game or two at the top of that division, within a game or two at the second wild card, but they should be doing more. Like, you look at that lineup, and it's a lineup that should be... Like, you look at it, it's still like the Twins lineup. They should be top to bottom hitting. Like, and they are, but, like, not as much as they have to be to offset the fact their pitching just hasn't been that good. They're missing the they're missing that ace starter, and you were hoping that one of the young guys, Corbin Burns, Brandon Woodruff, Freddie Peralta, would find it and be that guy. But that hasn't really happened. You're hoping that maybe a guy like um, Jimmy Nelson, who was coming back from injury, would you know find it again. But he hasn't really it hasn't worked out. Zach Davies has been much better than anybody expected him to be, but not like that ace type guy you need. They're missing that one big arm, I think. Um, I think they still have a very good shot at making the playoffs, don't get me wrong, but it's just, they should be doing more. When you look at that lineup, when you have guys at every position that should be hitting, I, a big part of it actually is that Travis Shaw and Jesus Aguilar have kind of sucked this season. They've been, like, bad. And, you know, when you factor that into the equation, it makes sense why they haven't been as good as they should be, but when you look at it, they have guys, like, established major leaguers that hit, like, at above average, if not, if not very well, at every every spot on the field. Like, Kane is underperforming also, but in the outfield, Braun, Kane, Yelich, and Yelich is having another MVP-type season. But Braun is, he's fine. He hasn't really been good in a few years, but, like, he's he'll get the job done. Um, fuck Ryan Braun, though. Uh, Lorenzo Kane, he was, like, a borderline MVP candidate last season. He just hasn't been able to figure it out this season. And then in the infield... You, sh you should be looking at, like, Shaw, Arcia, Moustakis, Aguilar, which is three guys that hit extremely well, and then Arcia, who feels well. But instead, what you're looking at is, you know, Shaw and Aguilar have both been awful. And you have Hira coming up, who is good in his short tenure in the majors, getting called back up soon. But he'll probably, you know, more than likely replace one of those two, and they'll probably either depart in a trade or get DFA'd. But those two, like, not being... And you have Grandal behind the plate, who's debatably the best catcher in baseball overall, which, you know, we can talk about a different time, but you know, when you look at that lineup, the guys they have in that order, it, they should be so much better, but they're just not by virtue of a couple of them that are performing and not having the right arms, right? And I think they're another team that easily could make a run, but it's just not, it just hasn't, ha hasn't all, the pieces haven't all clicked together yet. 
and I definitely could at some point, but it just hasn't quite happened yet, and by that I have to put them in B tier, because they're still definitely in the mix for that central division. Still in the mix for that, you know, second wildcard spot, maybe first wildcard spot. Both wildcard spots in the National League are so wide open, you have to, like, all these teams are in the running for them. Like, nothing is really shaken out yet, so, you know, I'm kind of curious as to what's going to happen there. Alright, the Tigers, they suck, they're really bad. Um, you have, like, so in the rotation, you have Matthew Boyd and Spencer Turnbull. Turnbull is, he's been a pretty big surprise. He's been good this season, like, better than most people would expect him to be. Boyd's been pretty solid. He'll probably get dealt at the deadline. Then you have, like, Hunter Green, their closer. He'll get dealt at the deadline. You have Castellanos and Cabrera in that lineup. Castellanos has a good chance to get dealt at the deadline. Team's a big seller. And the Tigers, they're bad. They're even worse than the Royals record was, I'm pretty sure. Probably not on paper, but they're very bad. They Nothing's going for them. All right, Los Angeles Dodgers, S tier, they're the best team in baseball right now. It's it's the Dodgers just they fire on all cylinders, right? Like best lineup, in, eh, probably not the best lineup. They have top five lineup in baseball. The rotation one through five has been the best in baseball. Their bullpen, which was like their big issue, has probably has been like top three or four in baseball in the last month. Like they're starting to figure something out. The Dodgers just top to bottom are a very good team at every spot. Every spot in their order hits. Every piece of the rotation pitch as well. I wouldn't say the same for their bullpen, but you know they're a couple, of, they're one or two arms away from having a very solid bullpen. The Dodgers are very good; they're the best team in baseball. They have the best record in baseball. Preach of the best run differential in baseball, best pitching staff in baseball, top five lineup in baseball. They're just good at everything. The Dodgers are very good. There's not really too much more to say than that. They're going to win that division. They have like 15 games up already, which is kind of nuts. The Astros, they're going to go in S tier, but actually the bottom half of S tier. They've been on a pretty bad losing streak lately. Not losing streak, but they've lost a good amount of games this month. They're only like five games up in their division when they were like 10. And the Rangers are getting a lot of ground on them. And the Rangers, the A's, and Angels are all gaining ground on them. I still think they're basically a lock to win that division, but it's not like as guaranteed right now. Uh, I'll put them slightly above the Twins, actually. But actually, no, I take it back. I'll put them slightly below the Twins. With the Astros... The lineup, again, it's a pretty nuts lineup. Like, Springer, Altuve, Correa, Brantley. Um, I'm probably forgetting another, like, insane piece. Those top four are very, like, kind of nuts. Um, oh, Alex Bregman, duh. Uh, those top five are insanely nuts. Like, that's a great top of the order. And even outside of that, like, the, their six through nine are still pretty solid. Like, they're above average at the bottom of their order, but they have a god tier top of the order. Um, and the pitching staff, you have Verlander, Scion Canada, Cole, very good. His ERA isn't great, but he strikes a lot of guys out. He projects to be very good. Outside of that, it's actually been kind of iffy. Like, you're kind of almost worried about the Astro rotation. You've been hearing that they're looking for another arm at the deadline, which they're probably going to need. Um, I think if they get another, like, solid bolt, like solid rotation arm, they're probably back near the top of S tier. But as of right now, with this losing streak they're on, with how good the Yankees and Dodgers have been, they're still last year, but near the bottom of it, I would say. Um, don't get me wrong, still a very good team. They actually have a, the thing that the Yankees and Astros have that almost no other team does is like a very good bullpen. The Astros have Presley and Osuna at the back end, and then also pieces like Hector Rondon, um, Colin McHugh's in the bullpen, Brad, Pe Brad Peacock. Uh, Chris Davinsky. It's, a, it's a pretty functioning bullpen. It's much better than many other bullpens in baseball. That's another thing they have going for them. Alright, Tampa Bay. Putting them in A tier. Actually, about between the Braves and the Cubs. Um, Tampa Bay. It's looking more and more like they're just not going to like, keep up with the Yankees. The Yankees are just too... Con their offense is just too consistent. But the Rays still a very good baseball team. They have debatably a top five. I don't I, actually it's almost definitely a top five rotation in baseball with Snell, Morton, and Glasnow at the front of it. Uh, Charlie Morton's been like a Cy Young contender this year and Blake Snell hit kind of a rough patch the last couple of weeks but he's still a very good starter like ace caliber starter. Um, good rotation and the bad parts of the rotation are masked by how like how flexible they are with their bullpen. They use the opener a lot. They have a lot of long. They have like a lot of long relief type guys like Ryan Yarbrough, Ryan Stanek. Um, 
They have Brendan McKay, who made his first Major League start, I think, last night and was really freaking good. He'll probably stick with the Major League team if he continues to pitch like that. Uh, good lineup. Austin Meadows rakes. Tommy Pham rakes. G-Man Choi is good. They have pieces like G-Man Choi, Willie Adamas, Daniel Robertson, Joey Wendell. Guys that are probably like role players for the most part, but they just get the job done. And, you know, they mesh together into a lineup really well. Um, Kevin Kiermaier, another one of those pieces who plays great defense. The Rays are just a team that works. They're not exceptionally good at anything, but they just work well on every level. Credit to that front office because they're not like they're a team that isn't great at anything, but and doesn't have really stars even. But all their like role players and you know decent MLB players, they all mesh together to make them good at just just, just about everything. Even that bullpen, it's kind of faltered recently. But Diego Castillo, Jose Alvarado, Colin Pache, good bullpen. Um. Yeah, the Rays are just pretty solid all around. I think they're very likely to make the playoffs. I think that if not a lock for the first wild card spot, I'd be very surprised if they fell out of the wild card entirely. I honestly wouldn't even be surprised if they the Yankees had a rough patch if they you know snuck back into the talks for that division too. Um, yeah, the Rays are very good. The San Francisco Giants on the other hand are very bad. Um, yeah, they they're just pretty inept. Pitching staff isn't terrible, but they're just inept on offense. They don't have anybody at the plate that's, like, even above average. Like, I mean, you could maybe, like, Brandon Bell, but outside of that, like, even, it's sad to see, like, Buster Posey, Brandon Crawford, they're just, like, I don't want to say bad now, but they're just not hitting at all this year. And you could chalk it up to injuries, you could chalk it up to aging, changing bodies. But, uh, yeah, they just have not been good at the plate at all, to the point where it's very hard for them to win any games because they don't produce any runs on offense, which is compounded by the fact they play in an insane pitcher's park. So yeah, they just don't score runs, and you need to score runs to win baseball games, unfortunately. Texas. I'm going to put Texas in C-plus tier. I'll just put them here for now. Um, The Rangers, what a huge surprise. Like, they've been very good this season. They're like 10 games over 500 right now, which I don't think anybody would have called or expected. Um, You know, yeah. The Rangers, a surprising pitching staff. Mike Miner, Lance Lynn, guys that you kind of wrote off as just like, is it their career is basically over? Having resurgent type seasons. Um, if they wanted to be sellers at the deadline, they have a couple pieces right there where they could be like sell and, you know, they, they could sell for like good prospect return. But if the Rangers want to compete, this it, the, the issue is the Rangers here are kind of in limbo, right? They're not going to win their division against the Astros. They potentially could if they go on a huge run, but I wouldn't count on it. You could even make the argument they're probably not going to make the playoffs, but with that record they have right now and the chance they could, you almost want to start buying at the deadline. But the issue is, these are the kind of moves you saw it with the Orioles sort of recently, where at the in twenty sixteen I think they were were they in the wild card game? They either were in the wild card game or like barely missed the wild card game. And they bought at the deadline, like, bef- they bought before that season, they bought at the deadline, and it totally just hamstrung them, and they've been bad since. Like, it's one of those situations where you don't want to tell your fan base, like, yeah, we have a really good record and are, can potentially compete for a playoff spot right now, but we're going to sell instead because it's better long term. Even if it's the right decision, you can't tell your fan base that. So, the Rangers kind of in limbo right now. They're a good baseball team. They hit very well. Maybe not top to bottom in their order, but they have a lot of good hitters. I mean, they're throwing out, like, Renato Odor, who's debatably been the worst regular major leaguer in baseball this season. But outside of that, they have a good order. They have, like, Joey Gallo, who mashes. They have guys like Logan Forsyth and Hunter Pence, who a lot of people, some of their pitching staff, a lot of people are just like, their career is over. They're going to Texas to end their career. And they've been very good. As Dribble Carrera, similarly to that. They have a good mix of veterans and young guys, like Delano DeShields, Gallo, um... Nomar Mazzara, Ronald Guzman, that all just hit pretty well. They they have a good they have a good offensive lineup. They have a surprisingly pretty solid pitching staff. I think their bullpen's not that great. I think they have like Jesse Chavez is pretty good, and like their closer is Jose Leclerc. It's supposed to be Jose Leclerc, but he's kind of been bad. I don't really know what he's doing right now. But um, yeah, the Rangers are they're good. Are they good enough to make the playoffs? Probably not, but they're good. Uh, yeah. I, I'm curious to see what the Rangers are going to do this deadline, if anything. Um, 
it's almost a dilemma where you can make the argument that just doing nothing is the best thing, but that could also just totally destroy them. Um, it's very strange. It's a very strange situation. I almost feel bad for the Rangers front office and their fans because they're probably going to end up selling, which is just a really tough decision when you're in this spot. You know, 10 games over 500, but it might be what has to be done. Um, we move on to the New York Mets. The Mets are going in C tier. I almost, just for dramatic effect and clickbaitiness, want to put them in D tier because they've been really bad recently. I'm going to put them near the bottom of C tier, though. Um, the Mets are just not like a functional baseball team right now. They were like around, maybe even above 500 at the start of this month, and they're like pretty significantly below 500 now. Uh, it's just a matter of like, on paper, a very good team. They have a great pitching staff. They have like a not great, but like two two like Familia and Diaz top of that bullpen that should be anchoring it. They have like what should be a very good lineup that hits top to bottom, and they kind of just have none of those things. Their bullpen has been like one of the worst bullpens in baseball. Um, you know, Diaz, something's wrong with him. He's not, he hasn't, I don't think anybody expected him to be, like, close to what he was last season, like a 1 ERA 60 save pitcher, but you expect him to be, like, at least a functional closer, which he kind of hasn't been recently. Famili is washed. His career should be, his career is over. He's terrible. He looks awful. Uh, the lineup, it's still a solid lineup. You have guys like Jeff McKeel, Brandon Nemo that get on base well. Power hitters like, um, sorry, power hitters like Pete Alonso that'll get the job done. Um, it's not a bad lineup by any means, but it's not good enough to offset the fact their bullpen is awful. Their starting rotation that are underperforming. You have DeGrom and Syndergaard, who are good. Wheeler underperforming. Vargas, surprisingly, who's been, like, the best pitcher on that staff. Um, the Mets are just, and, you know, I think on paper, they're still, like, a above 500 team. And which is why I'm not putting them in D tier, even though their record probably is deserving of D tier. Oh, shit. Whoops. Sorry about that. Um. Oh. Oh, did I act? Okay, hang on. I might just fuck this one. <laughs> oh, that's unfortunate. Okay, there we go. Alright, we're back. I don't know. Oh, so these guys. Okay. Alright, we're back. Sorry about that. Okay, talking about the Mets. Okay, that's stupid that when you go to a presentation where it kicks these teams out of F tier. Um, the Mets, on paper, they're an above average baseball team. But uh, in practice, they're, they're a below average baseball team. They're, 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 really, metsing it, they're really metsing it up this season. Uh, their front office is, seems like incompetent, their manager seems incompetent. There's a lot of, there seems to be like some sort of clubhouse issues with the team. Um, yeah, they're just not good. They're they're not good, <laughs> which is sad to see because they have a lot of names I really like in that order, like Brandon Nimmo, Jeff McNeil, um, Jed Lowry, who has not played a single game this season. Um, but you know their lineup is solid, starting rotation, underperforming but solid. Their bullpen, the dumpster fire, and with a lot of teams, their bullpen, a lot of teams in this list, their bullpen is not good. But the Mets are really deserving of having like a dumpster fire label in their bullpen. Um, a lot of fans of almost every team would say their bullpen is awful, but the Mets' bullpen is actually awful. Um, yeah, the Mets are just bad. And the Orioles are also just bad. Um, the Orioles, are they still the worst team in baseball? I think they have the worst record in baseball by a good amount. Yeah, the Orioles are definitely worse than Tigers and the Royals. Um, again, I don't really have to say much about the Orioles. They do not do anything well that a baseball team needs to do well to win games. Um, they don't hit, they don't field, they don't pitch. Not really a whole lot more than that. Trey Mancini, good season. I'll say that much. Oh, also John Means. John Means also having a good season. One of those two will probably be an all-star, so good for them. Uh, so yeah. We're going to go back and reorder within tiers now. I think F tier is correct. D tier? Uh... All these teams are, like, bad, but, like, I don't know, really, they're all, like, equally bad, I would say. Um, maybe the Blue Jays are a little higher than the Mariners. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, alright, this is fine. You can even make their own though, this is right, but I think this is right. C tier. White Sox, Mets, Pirates, Reds, Angels, this is fine. That makes sense. C plus tier, A's, Padres, Diamondbacks, Rangers. Um, hmm. 
The Diamondbacks and Padres are very similar in very similar situations. I think they like kind of tandem together. And the same, I, the A's and the A's and Rangers are also in very similar situations. So yeah, I think this is eh. I think I think the Rangers' record just by merit puts them at the top of this tier. But yeah, so I'll say this is about right. Um, I think the the Padres and Diamondbacks are just about interchangeable. I think maybe it's like this, but it, they could definitely go either way. Um, I wouldn't get too caught up in between the Padres and Diamondbacks, who is better. All right, they move into B tier. Red Sox at the top. Yeah, that makes sense. They're borderline A tier. Um, who else here is borderline A tier? Kind of nobody. Probably the, probably the Brewers. And then, you know, I'm just gonna do. I'm gonna put the Nationals above the Phillies. Um, yeah, we'll go. Red Sox, Brewers, Nationals, Phillies, Rockies. Car are the Cardinals that much worse than the Brewers? Oh, no, they're not. And the Indians are still good too. Hmm, this is hard. Um, we'll do Indians like here, Phillies, Rockies, and then Cardinals like here. All right, I'm pretty confident in this. Yeah, I may be overrating the Nationals here, but I think they're the real deal. I'm buying into the Nationals. Uh. And then an A tier Cubs Rays Braves that seems good. And then S tier Astros and Twins interchangeable at three and f at two and three no three and four I can't count. I think pretty clear. I think the Dodgers Yankees are pretty clearly one two in that order. But Twins and Astros could go either way. I'll put the Astros behind the Twins just because they've been kind of bad recently. Could go either way for sure though. All right, July twenty nineteen MLB. Tier list power rankings. S tier. 1. Dodgers. 2. Yankees. 3. Twins. 4. Astros. A tier. 5. Braves. 6. Rays. 7. Cubs. B tier. 8. Red Sox. 9. Brewers. I don't know, actually, this is wrong. No, I, I'm not happy with my ranking with the B tier. Uh, hmm. Are the Brewers? I don't think the Brewers are that much better than any of these teams, to be honest. I think the Brewers and the Cardinals actually just have to go together because they're just in the similar situations. I also don't think the Nationals are the best. Right, we'll put the Indians slightly above the Nationals. Yeah. So we'll do the two AL teams competing for that second wild card spot, and then just the cluster of NL teams. All right. So what are we on? Eight Red Sox, nine Indians, ten Nationals, eleven Brewers, twelve Cardinals. 13 Phillies, 14 Rockies, 15 Rangers. Oh, we'll go to C plus tier. 15 Rangers, 16 Diamondbacks, 17 Padres, 18 Athletics. Then in C tier, 19 Angels, 20 Reds, 21 Pirates, 22 Mets, 23 White Sox. D tier, 24 Blue Jays, 25 Giants, 26 Mariners, 27 Marlins. F tier, 28 Royals, 29 Tigers, and 30 Orioles. I'm pretty happy with this. I think this is about what I wanted. Um, looking in a potential future playoff pictures, I think you have the Dodgers pretty clearly winning the NL West. The Yankees pretty clearly winning the AL East, but the Rays could catch up with them. Potentially even the Red Sox, too. The Twins pretty clearly winning the AL Central. Maybe the Indians pose a threat, but they would need to go on a huge run. The Astros are pretty clearly winning the AL West, but they've been kind of faltering recently. The Rangers, the A's, the hell, even maybe the Angels could sneak up on them, but it almost definitely won't happen. Um, the Braves pretty solidly ahead in that AL East, NL East, sorry. Um, again, it's a tight enough division where the Nationals or Phillies can make a run, but I sort of don't see it happening. But it's more likely to happen than any of these four teams losing their divisions, so that's why they're they're in A tier. And the Cubs, uh, the NL Central, probably the most toss-up division still in baseball, uh, with the Brewers, the Cardinals, and even the Reds and Pirates potentially could make a run. But if I had to pick one team for that division, it'd probably be the Cubs. Uh, yeah. So we have... I told myself I wouldn't put too many teams in SA and B tier, but I did. I put 14. Whoops. Uh, so here's here's the predictions for playoff pictures. In the NL, we have the Dodgers as the one seed, the Braves as the two seed, the Cubs as the three seed, with the wild card being between the Nationals and the Brewers. 
and then in the AL we have Yankees 1, Twins 2, Astros 3 with the wild card between the Rays and the Red Sox with the Indians coming very close behind. That's what we're saying. That's definitely not going to happen. My predictions are never right about anything. Here's the tier list. Thank you for watching, everybody. We'll see you guys in the next one. Have a nice day. One ball, two strikes. Out to left field. McNeil going back. It is.